Hi there, this is Abhishek and in this video I will talk about how to tackle slowly changing dimensions in ClickView. Slowly changing dimension is a data warehousing concept in which it has been explained about different ways you can preserve the changes. For example, within an organization, after a certain time period, employees are allowed to change the department so that they can find new challenging opportunities and advance their career. Now when the employee is changing the department, it is important to keep track of uh, such records to understand how much time employee has spent in the first department and when his or her start date was in in the second department. If we don't keep track of that change, an impression will be going to the HR or the new manager at the next promotion cycle that employee has spent a considerable amount of time in the second department whereas it is not true. So to clearly identify the change, database experts do certain provision in the table as per the needs of the reporting and there are various ways by which this change can be handled. So let's move on to see the first scenario which is called type 0 or no change. In this scenario, no change is preserved and we only have the original values in the table. So for example, if this is the table where we have employee key, employee code, name and project code and if the project is changing for this employee, then that change will not be preserved and table will always contain the uh, original values. So that is something uh, uh, is not I have seen pretty much in the current scenario generally we want to keep track of a change and uh, to know what is next after this let's move on to the type 1 which is overwrite and here in this scenario if change is happening so here in this case the project for Akash is changing from project 1 to project 2 then we are just tracking the project 2 information or the change information that means the pro the change has been overwritten in the same table from p01 it is now p02 now if we are doing this a similar situation will happen uh, which i explained earlier in case of an employee who is changing one department to another and in that case if second department is here and somebody wants to query that what is the department then it will only be the second department or the new department and here in this case the new project so an impression will go that uh, since starting or since beginning employee has worked only on the project 2. So let's move on to the next recommendation which is called type 2 or slowly changing dimension 2 SCD2. It is a bit detailed or sophisticated change. So if we see that uh, here is our uh, main base table which I was showing in the earlier scenarios also and now the project is changing from 1 to 2. So we'll look at the first scenario. And here we are tracking this by creating a separate column called movement. So since the since joining, if Akash is related to the project 01, then the movement is nothing because since joining is in the same project. But when the movement is happening, it has become movement 1 and the new project code is assigned to the uh, Akash. So in this way, uh, by querying which is the latest movement, you can always identify uh, what is the lit what is the project in which Akash is working uh, as a latest project and also you can see the different projects in which Akash has worked. A different uh, kind of implementation may be in similar scenario where you are capturing the star date and end date where you are clearly identifying that what is the star date of, a pro uh, of an employee project uh, in this case for P01 and the end date. In case of P02, the project 2, what is the start date and end date? If end date is uh, not mentioned or uh, employee is still working, then it is left usually blank and the database generally considered as blank. So generally, this is the kind of uh, change which is managed uh, where you are identifying the start date and end date related to that change. And as well as uh, you have the new row for, uh, for picking up or for recording the change. So now let's move on to the type 3 or SCD3 uh, where 
we preserve the change but without additional row. So what happens in this case that you just have one row. You have mentioned the old project code which is P01, the new project code P02 and the effective date of starting into the project 02 or in the new project. So what can happen in this case that uh, with the effective date you can identify the last date of the old project and uh, for the new project uh, I mean the new date or the end date is still not there because it is a new project for P02. So these are the three recommendations which has been given but generally we don't move beyond SCD3 but in theory you have uh, the uh, the way to preserve the changes by going up to the level 6 or type 6 or SCD6. To know more about this you can read Ralph Kimball book the data warehousing toolkit where all the six different types is given with the good scenarios and you can understand more about it. So now let's talk about its implementation into the click view. So here is a quick two tables uh, where I have the employee data where I have the employee name here in this case let's say Akash uh, who has joined a particular project the start date of a project from P01 uh, is the 1st March in project 2 he moved on to 1st September in project 3 it has moved on 1st November similarly I have information from for other uh, employees and their effective start date in their respective projects and here in this second table I have the information about the project start date and finish date. Now our objective is to match this interval with this event data which has been given to us. So in that case uh, if we have certain project which is overlapping so for example the project here project 1 is starting on the 1st March and it is ending on the 30th June. The project 2 is starting on the 1st April and ending on the 30th set September. So these two projects is kind of overlapping because the project 1 close date is falling after the project 2 start date. So in that case if we want to know uh, let's say on the 1st of April if I select this how many projects were active I will not be able to identify because it will going to select only the information which is related to the project 2. So our objective is to create such a link that uh, or create an such an interval where uh, we if we are selecting the interval uh, let's say the fourth the first of april uh, to 30th of uh, september interval then it should show all the projects uh, related to that interval so in that case if any of the employee who is in project 01 should be appeared over here which can so that we can clearly identify that what are all the projects which is active in that particular interval so to do that, I have done the uh, configuration in the backend and I will help you understand step by step. So here is the first table which is employee project. They have employee key, uh, employee code, name, project code as project, what is the role, effective period and I have renamed it to a period. Next, I have the project interval table and it has the start date, finish date, project code as project and then I have created another uh, column based on the start date and finish date. This column will going to basically crea create as a bridge or as a, com as a column which will establish a relationship between project uh, table which has the interval data and the project employee project table which has the event data that means the effective period. So how we will do that? So in that case I have created a project interval where I have combined the start date and the finish date. Then I have created a bridge table. So what this bridge table is doing it is picking up it is uh, utilizing the interval match function. So interval match function I have explained in my previous example if you are not aware then watch my last video which will help you understand what it does. Interval match will going to take the period from the first table which is here. It has the event data that means the effective start date of an employee in a particular project. And it will match up with the start date 
and finish date of the project interval data because it is see it is taking a resident table as a project interval match so these two fields are coming right from here the period is matching up with this and it is kind of creating a combination now what we are doing we just ignore left join for a moment and consider this that after load we have a period and the same project interval column from the bridge table so now because we have taken the interval match uh, and took the uh, period column from the first table the period has become the integral part of this table and while putting a resident as bridge we are able to fetch period as well as this date or this uh, combination which we created in the interval project interval table so here we have fetched the uh, we have fetched the project interval uh, information from the start date and finish date which is there in the project interval mat in the bridge table sorry and then we have finally did a left join with the employee project so that both period and in project interval column becomes the integral part of the first column so what is happening that first you are picking up the finished start date and finish date into a bridge table combining it it with a period and after you have done the combination from the bridge table you are picking up the period and the creating a combined key or a composite key with the help of the start date and end date and finally doing a left join so that it met it becomes the integral part of this table after it becomes the integral part of this table this project interval interval column is matching up this project interval column and then creating a bridge or creating a uh, join between these two tables so if i just click okay and show you the this diagram this will help you understand that uh, here in this project interval table we have the project interval start date and finish date right and from the bridge table we took this period and project interval so period was already part so no problem in there but project interval is a new addition to this column and because of this project interval this uh, is now combined with the this information this uh, Pro, uh, interval match table so two columns project and project interval match was there if you don't want project you can remove that but i have just simply left it over there that's not an issue for me so now if i select a field here in this case project interval click okay what it gives me is this information and now i can click on any of these these three intervals which is present on me which was earlier over there and if i select over this it is showing me all these different projects which were part of this interval so project 1 project 2 these are the two projects which are overlapping each other and by clicking over here i can clearly identify that what are the project which is falling in this particular range earlier i was not able to do it if i just simply had the project comb uh, project uh, as a combination or as a join so that's a quick introduction or a quick scenario about how you can use the interval match and uh, uh, composite key creation to tackle the uh, interval data and figure out the right information well there are couple of other scenarios uh, related to interval match uh, which is there i i may be showing it in in couple of uh, next couple of videos so stay tuned for that and i hope uh, it has given you some information or good information to understand when to use internal match uh, in a slowly changing dimension situation so that's pretty much all i wanted to talk in this video and we'll meet you in a new video with a new topic